we just have to sometimes ignore those voices in our head and just really follow that pull in our stomach. And that's when things start to make sense and and you start to build that confidence in yourself. But if you wait for the confidence, then, (laughs) you know, it's not going to just drop on you. Mm -mm. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Today's episode is brought to you by Gusto. So when you work for someone else, you really look forward to payday. But when you become a business owner, you really look forward to finding that great payroll provider. And that's where Gusto comes in. Small businesses across the country love running payroll using Gusto. Gusto automatically files and pays your taxes. It's super easy to use and you can add benefits and HR support to help take care of your team and keep your business safe. It's loyal. It's modern. You might even fall in love with it yourself. Side Hustle Pro listeners get three months free when they run their first payroll. So try a demo and test it out yourself at gusto.com slash SHP. That's gusto.com slash SHP. Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back to the show. Today in the guest chair is Catherine Solis Ray. Catherine is a self transformation strategist for women and the founder of the Fiercer Women brand, where she empowers and motivates women with ways to get past their blocks and become their fiercest selves in life and business. Fun fact, when I first started my blog back in 2015, Catherine was one of the first people I came across. I came across her when I started out side hustling and I was just attracted to her authentic approach to sharing marketing and content creating tips. She is personally someone I've purchased content from and learned from. And what I like to do is kind of share my best kept secrets with you guys, like people I have actually used and learned from to build Side Hustle Pro to what it is today. And I still look to Catherine for motivation when I'm getting in my own head and I'm letting fear hold me back. She is someone who is really good at just telling you to step it up and just be the fierce woman you know you can be. So Catherine has used her marketing expertise to train hundreds of entrepreneurs how to build their brand and do the personal development work necessary to break through. She has done this through online training programs, courses, and live speaking events, helping women elevate so they can step into their true potential and live their life to the fullest is her primary goal. On today's episode, we get into how to overcome those mental barriers that keep you stuck and stagnant and not taking action, how to create habits that move the needle, and how she personally overcame her rock bottom moment and is now able to inspire other women to step into their greatness. Before we get into the episode, though, you know what time it is. Here is a shout out to our review of the week. This one comes from George Percy Burdell. George says, this podcast is an incredibly good value for aspiring entrepreneurs and small business owners. Not only does Nikayla do a great job of getting guests that are relatable and transparent about their respective paths, but she also hits the mark when it comes to asking the questions that are top of mind for listeners. I enjoy every listen. Five stars. Easy. Aw, thank you very much, George. I really appreciate it. It's good to know that we have our fellas, our fellas contingent coming on strong and also continuing to listen. Um, That is wonderful and just goes to show that everyone can learn from everyone. So thank you again. And for those of you who are looking to leave a review, just head over to the Apple Podcast app and leave a review for Side Hustle Pro. All right, now let's get into it. So welcome to the guest chair, Catherine. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for being here. Now, I just finished reading your intro. Everybody knows what a big fan I am of yours. The fact that I've taken some of your programs purchased from you. But give us a peek into who is Catherine in your own words. Who are you and Mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, I'm all about helping women to break through their own BS, their belief system, (laughs) and really just 
step into the woman that they know that they were born to be in business and in life. So I help um, women who are monetizing their expertise, such as coaches, consultants, writers, speakers, and I help them to really tap into their potential so that they can share their message in a bigger way, as well as live life in a way that gives them life. So I'm all about helping the woman entrepreneur um, just live a happier life. So, you know, I've always had that that pull, that urge to help people elevate. And, you know, at first I started with just business trainings, marketing trainings, branding trainings, and working with clients, you know, I realized, Hey, you know, there's a lot more to success than, um, just the tactics, you know, it's all about, um, getting past a lot of our blocks and the mindsets so I've integrated that into my brand. And that's what I'm all about. So I really like the fact that you have built in the mental part and the mental challenges into your brand and your offerings, because it's something that you don't really realize are going to impact you until you're in it, until you're side hustling seriously or, you know, full time entrepreneur. And there are all these mental blocks that are causing you to have this dialogue with yourself Mm -hmm. about all the reasons why you shouldn't release yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So. Before you realize that, let's take it back for a second. What was your path into this world of online marketing and branding? I actually started in network marketing, um, selling other people's products, really, you know. Um, So I was selling like all types of different, I got into different network marketing businesses. Um, I was in like stuff with vitamins or lotions and potions, uh, (laughs) Potions. uh, energy, (laughs) um, selling cable, all types of stuff. Um, so it was really interesting. Um, I don't regret it. I did not succeed in it, but, um, you know, I got a lot of hustle from that. So I started in that And at first, you know, my main thing was like, you know, I want to make money and I want to help other people. So it was great until I realized I wasn't passionate about those products. So it just really became about making money. And I actually did get some results in an online network marketing business I joined, which was really like affiliate marketing. You know, I would promote their business courses and I would get a commission. And so that was cool, too. But I realized I wasn't even passionate in those products either. I was just selling it and I felt like a fraud. I felt terrible. And, uh, I realized, okay, you know what? I'm going to just create my own stuff. Like I've been doing this for a while. I'm starting to get a hang of this online marketing stuff. Um, I started with offline network marketing, but now I'm in online network marketing. I've learned so much. So let me start teaching others, you know, how to leverage the internet. So I started with basic things like how to use Facebook better and, um, how to create videos. And I realized, you know, I was getting a hang of all this and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on my own products. I completely walked away from that other business and I mustered up the courage to create my first product, which was an audio training on branding. Oh, wow. And were you doing all this while you were in college? Yes. So I joined network marketing on my 18th birthday. I was a freshman still. And uh, I stayed until about my sophomore year, like mid sophomore year. Uh, So actually, I think it was longer than that. But I started uh, selling my own products. I know it was like the end of my sophomore year. And so um, I never had to really work a actual job. I just had my work study job in school. And, you know, I started the affiliate marketing stuff and started my own thing that was 2014 that I really started seeing like some results and people buying my stuff. So this was all while I was in school. What was your initial career path before starting to Mm -hmm. dabble in network marketing and affiliate marketing? Yeah, I was studying marketing. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, after after I graduate, I'll work in some type of creative marketing stuff. You know, I always liked the concept of what makes people buy. Like, why do people buy? How do I sell things? How do I sell more products? I was always interested in that. So I was studying marketing and I'm like, okay, you know, this is what I'm going to do. But once I got into network marketing and I saw the kind of money people could make on their own in general, I was like, you know, I know I'm not going to get a job. (laughs) There's just no way, There's um, no way, no way. There's absolutely no way. And so, yeah, that's where 
you know, I, I stayed in school, but I knew like I was not going to graduate to find a job. Like I was going to make this thing work so I could graduate with like steady income. So I actually launched Fiercer Woman. So as I said, I was selling branding products and stuff um, as Catherine Solis Ray, but I launched Fiercer Woman, which was more about um, being confident, being the kind of woman that you want want to be my senior year. Um, I was about to graduate. It was that January, May was coming soon. And I'm like, no, I need to get in tune with what I want, get in alignment, because that's a very important thing. And um, launch something that really matters. And that's where I made that shift from just like branding stuff to now talking more to women and about being a woman. So you knew you needed to make solid income. So what kind of products are entailed within Fiercer Women so that you Mm -hmm. can sustain yourself? Right. So when I first started, I'll be honest with you, when I first started Fiercer Woman, I wasn't selling anything that was in the personal development area directly. I was more so speaking it within the message of business. So I still had branding and online business uh, coaching. So it was like four or six week coaching that I would do one on one. So that's where I started with you know my, my offerings more so in the one on one coaching. But it was focused on getting your message out there and how to build your online business. And through my messaging, I would just incorporate, you know, being a better woman, being confident in order to do these things. So I was talking about it, but I wasn't even offering anything um, related to it. And so that kind of continued for a while. You know, I graduated, I was, I started to see results, but I was focused mainly on selling courses and classes around branding. So I had classes on Instagram, um, well, courses on Instagram marketing, video marketing, Facebook video marketing, ads, how to set up ads. And then I would do one-on-one coaching as well. And while of doing that, then the next tipping point came when I was like, all right, I'm talking about, you know, all this confidence stuff, but let me take it up an, an extra notch. So that's when my content became even more dense in Um, like the personal development and making it more actionable than just woo-woo motivation. And that's when I started seeing income from it, mainly through speaking. So I would be, I would uh, go to events, um, speak, and then I got the courage to now launch an actual class, which was called Habit Hacking. So that was my first offer that was more related to not just business, but just being a better woman and changing your life. And then from there, break through your BS. And then now, Mm -hmm. which is coming, which is, you know, get your shift together slash press play bootcamp. So, you know, I still will be selling and offering classes on marketing branding because it's something that I absolutely love. But as well now in the personal development side, doing that because I I realize it's really, really important as I worked with one-on-one clients, especially. Yes. Yes. So tell us about some of the experiences that led you to decide to start this self-transformation strategy. So was it, Mm -hmm. you know, you would talk to people and they would have this awesome product, but they just didn't have the confidence to put themselves out there? Yes. So it was that and myself. So I had my first five-figure month um, a while back. And I remember that month (laughs) was amazing, you know, and I was just selling business courses to me. I was like, oh my God, wow, like this is actually real, it's happening. But the month right after that, I went into like this real depression, like it was terrible. I was not getting out of bed. I think I gained like 30 pounds that month. Um, I was just watching shows after shows. I had a client wait list, but I would not take in <laughs> anyone new. I didn't want to speak to anyone. Um, I didn't want to do anything. And prior to that, when I was working with the clients, I already picked up on people not doing what I would, what I would, you know, tell them is tell them to do. And I understood that it's hard, but I realized a lot of it was just fear. It's not that they didn't want to. It's not that um, they didn't believe in what I was saying, but it was it was them getting in their own way. I would get on the next session and they still hadn't followed through on what we spoke about. And it was extremely draining. And I think just a mix of that and realizing that I wasn't really tapping into my true potential is what drove me to just feel like absolute crap the next month. And knowing that I was supposed to 
speak more on inner work and personal development, but I kept running to my comfort zone, which was just business and branding. So it was a mix of my clients suffering and also just where I was at and how I was feeling. And I, that really made me make that push of, okay, let me actually own this message of, you know, being a fiercer woman beyond business, um, beyond in your business, but in your life. Wow. I can so relate to that, uh, both Mm -hmm. on the piece of people not taking your instruction. And I don't know about (laughs) you, but I also felt like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why can't I get them to Mm -hmm. take this step, you know? So how did you get out of bed and how did you push past? Mm -hmm. Do you think you were experiencing your own level of fear to take on this Mm -hmm. aspect of the business? Yes, it was definitely fear. And I had to hit like a rock bottom um, to really say, okay, (laughs) you know, now my my break has, you know, overstated, you know, it was a rock bottom. Like I was just not doing anything at all. Like I had to miss a lot of payments. I had to um, gain more weight um, in order to be like, okay, no, I've, I've went too far. I just went past what was acceptable. So that's where I said, okay, let me take baby steps. Let me do something. And that's where I started to just create at least free content, just sharing my actual message. And I started to see that people were responding. I mean, I've always got great engagement on content, but, you know, now that I was talking about, you know, the inner work, I saw women, you know, just like, wow, like I needed this or I needed this today. You have no idea. And that's when I got more comfortable with, you know, actually owning that message. So we just have to sometimes ignore those voices in our head and just really do it anyway follow that pull in our stomach. And that's when things start to make sense. And and you start to build that confidence in yourself. But if you wait for the confidence, then (laughs) it's not going to just, yeah, yeah. just Mm -mm. drop on you. And I did notice that I was like, where is Catherine Solis Ray? Because like I said, I was like, I definitely was motivated and inspired by the things you were doing. One of the things I love about your content. So when I was just getting started, I started with a blog and, Mm -hmm. you know, I love learning from other black women who look like me and, you know, Mm -hmm. were doing things like I was. And when I would sit in one of your, you know, when I would attend one of your classes or master classes, it was Mm -hmm. always just straightforward. It wasn't like some big sales pitch. It was just you were just talking to me Mm -hmm. and it always Mm -hmm. always got the sense like because you you don't overly prepare as far as like uh, and this is not an insult this is like it feels Mm -hmm. like you're you're like walking us through it and it's one take it's not like you're gonna go back and like (laughs) be like oh this pop-up came up while I was talking so terrible I have Mm -hmm, to scratch mm -hmm. it but that's what we need so I guess the Mm -hmm. reason I resonate with you is we all need to realize that the world is not over if we're not perfect exactly Yeah, that's a huge part of my breakthroughs um, was realizing done is better than perfect. And it's something that could be a weakness and a strength for me um, that I'm currently, you know, working with as well with like, you know, trying to find help with a team and everything. Um, But before I would try to wait until I had it all together. And I stayed broke for a really long time, um, way back when, when I was just waiting and trying to say, okay, let me wait till I have this logo, this website, this team, this yada, 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 this confidence, um, this uh, extra training before I make my own. And sometimes you just got to do it. And after you can go back. Yeah. (laughs) So speaking of which, like, what does it take to be a fiercer woman? It takes courage. It takes honesty. I think honesty is at the top of the list because it's honesty about what you want, what you really want. And honesty is something that we would think that we can be honest with ourselves. It's not honesty with other people. It's like really honesty with yourself. A lot of women I speak with, they say, oh, I want this. But when they really, really think about it, or they're really honest with themselves, they want something totally different. Or even if it's not totally different, they don't even want that thing. They want it because they're quote unquote supposed to want it or because it's popular or because it's cool right now or it seems easier or logical. And so being a fierce woman is about being honest with yourself, about honest about your desires, honest honest about your wants. And then it's about honoring your honesty. So it's about 
actually saying yes to those those yeses inside of you. I'm not just saying I want this, but now having the courage, having the pull to like actually do it. And that's in life. That's in business because, yeah, I talk about business a lot, but it's really about saying yes to what you want in life and no to what you don't care about or it's not really important to you so that you can live a life that's fulfilled. You know, whatever makes us happy is usually, you know, before people do the work, it's like 20 percent of their life rather than them focusing on the 20 percent and making that the majority of their life. The rest of their life is kind of just improvised. You know, it's whatever comes their way rather than actually engineering the kind of life, the kind of business that they want. And again, back to honesty, honoring their honesty and having the courage to follow it. Now, how do you take that first step? So when women come to you, how do you help them to push past that fear of getting started, like to actually just take one little step? I think you said it right there. It's the little like just take as an ambitious woman. Sometimes it's hard for us to take little steps or allow ourselves to take the little step. And so we spend months or even years trying to pursue the big step, trying to take the big leap immediately or trying to do a whole 360 um, without realizing it's just self-sabotage. I can't say how many times like I've seen it, you know, months and months go by and you look back and you haven't done anything at all because you're just like, it's a, also a pride thing. Well, I know I can do better. Yeah, we know that you can do better, but what are you going to do right now? You know, potential is cool, but what, what are you going to do? What are you really going to do? Like, and that's not to downplay yourself or play small is that sometimes you just have to play small in the beginning to play big. And that's the one of the biggest things I learned as an ambitious woman myself in order to move forward. I have my big vision in mind. I have these big steps in mind, but I'm not going to um, stay stagnant. So even if I have to take a tiny mini step, I'm not going to play my I'm not going to downplay myself. I'm still going to give myself a pat on the back and be very proud of myself for moving forward because that's going to create a domino effect right there. So I think the main thing when if you feel stuck, if you feel um, like you're just going in circles, it's about taking some kind of step like any step in the direction that you're scared of, that you're fearful of, or that you're doubting and just do it It make it really small, make it laugh. I call it laughably small, um, mini steps. So make it laughably small where it's so small that you just can't talk yourself out of it. And of course, get some accountability, maybe tell someone, announce it, you know, schedule it, invest in it ahead of time so that you have to do it, whatever, add that extra, that extra pull the extra push. But the thing is, you know, starting small to go big. I love that. And then how do you then turn that into habits? Right. So I've taken one step mm -hmm. and now I'm about to, you know, retreat to my comfort place under the covers. But <laughs> how mm -hmm. do I make it a habit? Uh huh. Right. It, it's really like it's really mindset and becoming comfortable. It sounds so cliche, but really becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable, looking at it, looking at it as a sign that you are doing what you have to do. Many of us, all right, we don't feel like it. All right, we did it yesterday. We'll just, we'll just go back into it tomorrow. We have to think like that, but it's, it's during those times that you really have to push. It's during those times that you've got to do it anyway. And it's remembering that the more you do it, the more automatic it's going to become. So if you keep that in mind, you're more motivated to move forward even when you don't want to, because you know that there's nothing wrong with you. It's not that you're lazy. It's that you're rewiring your brain. You're reprogramming um, habits and automatic habits and unconscious habits and thoughts that have become so, you know, ingrained in your personality and your ways that you're going to have to put a little extra effort. You're going to have to get a little uncomfortable in order to break those habits and, you know, to replace them automatic. And so every time I feel, you know, um, overwhelmed or just frustrated or annoyed that I have to do X, Y, and Z, um, I remember, I know that this is just temporary and eventually this is going to become automatic. And that itself is a motivation. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsor. Okay. 
have a side hustle hack for all to hear, and it's called Skillshare. You want to know how I grow as a businesswoman? I keep learning. There's not a week that goes by that I'm not checking out a refresher class or a deep dive tutorial. And my go-to is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 18,000 classes in business, marketing, entrepreneurship, you name it. So whether you're trying to start a side hustle or scale your business, Skillshare is there to keep you learning and thriving. In the last month alone, I've learned how to set up my email capture landing page on Squarespace and how to boost my email marketing using MailChimp, all through Skillshare. And now, Skillshare has a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for just 99 cents. That's right, just 99 cents. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Hustle Pro. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Hustle Pro to start your two months now. Hey, side hustlers. If you have already started your business or are getting ready to, you probably know that small business owners, we wear a lot of hats. And some of those hats are totally fun. But if we're being honest, some of them, like filing taxes and running payroll, for example, they're not so great. That's where Gusto comes in. Gusto makes payroll, taxes, and HR actually easy for small businesses. Fast, simple payroll processing, benefits, and expert HR support all in one place. Gusto even automatically pays and files your federal, state, and local taxes so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, they make it easy to add on health benefits and even 401ks for your team. Those old school clunky payroll providers just weren't built for the way we work as modern small businesses, but Gusto is. So let them handle one of your many hats because you have better things to do. Side Hustle Pro listeners get three free months when they run their first payroll. So try a demo and see for yourself at gusto.com slash SHP. That's gusto.com slash SHP. Now you, you you talked about coming back from a low point, rock bottom, and now yeah. that you are building up this new arm of the Kathleen Soli Stray brand, how do you balance learning, stumbling while also teaching others? And I know you're very transparent. So how do you balance showing that without feeling too vulnerable or like people will then mm -hmm. question your expertise? Do you ever feel that way? Absolutely. But I think in the past, I would say three years, not as much because I began to focus on what I know. There was a time where I thought I had to know everything or I thought that um, it was wrong to not know what I don't know instead of just learning, knowing that I'm always learning and focusing on what I do know. So there's always something I don't know. There's always something new popping up. There is always more that I feel I should understand more or know more about. That's why I'm always learning. But imagine, imagine waiting until I knew everything or until we knew everything. So um, a few years ago, I just made that commitment to really focus on what I do know. What have I done? And I have many clients I've worked with that just that little shift helped them make a lot more money because they were spending a lot of time trying to teach what they weren't comfortable with, what they never did before, um, what they just saw someone else talk about, but they never really experienced it. And I was one of those people too. And that created a lot of imposter syndrome and just not, I, I didn't believe in myself, but when I made the shift to saying, okay, what have I done? What do I know? What have I applied and got results with? And just focusing on that um, and knowing, hey, that I'm always I'm always growing and that's just what it is. So to me, it's like whoever can't learn, you know, the, I don't got to be on level 10. Like if I'm on level three, there's somebody on level one that needs what I have to offer. Absolutely. That has helped me break through and push through as well. Yes. Like this feeling like you need to be like 10, 20 years in the, <laughs> like by, exactly. by that time, like it's done. People have moved on to something else anyway. Right. <laughs> exactly. So what are the current revenue streams in your business and where do you see it going next? Um, so right now I no longer do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So everything's from classes 
or courses. I also have um, some people ask me this in my DMs like, hey, when's the next class? I have a lot of sales. I do sales funnels. Um, And it's something that right now is also a big part of what I'm working on in my business where, you know, showing up without um, having sales funnels without getting complacent (laughs) because Mm -hmm. whoever has them, which I'm sure you probably do, you know, people do. It's easy to get uh, lazy when you have, let's say, ads or automated stuff going on. So it's right now I'm working on, you know, showing up while also having passive income. So um, I have um, courses on Instagram, you know, how to build up your Instagram page. I also have um, Instagram ads training on how to set up ads. And I have um, a class on habits. So that's all about, you know, how to get past, just get past the the circle, the going back and forth on, all right, I'm going to start this. But then a week, not even a week, like two days later, you already fell off. So just, you know, how to hack your habits, how to create consistency. And um, where I see all of this going is diving deeper into the inner work. And this goes back to what you just asked me. Um, there's a lot that I don't know. It's a, my comfort zone has always been marketing, branding. I've always been really comfortable and good with it. But with the inner work stuff, there's so much I still have to work on that sometimes I'm like, what am I doing teaching this? So I had to take a step back and say, well, what have I done? And one thing that is huge is definitely habits, you know, hacking habits and just pushing past going through the motions through the day. So I said, I'm going to focus on that. And when I feel more confident in the next thing, I'm going to launch the next thing. So that's just where I'm at, just kind of going with the flow. I also um, am planning to diversify things a bit. So dance classes, events. I had an event in January, doing another one this upcoming January and just being less rigid with the income streams because I, yeah, I read the one thing I know focus is important, but I think, you know, everyone's just different. I'm a believer in alignment, doing things your way. And I realize, you know, I just like to do different things. So that's where I'm I'm kind of going right now, not taking myself too seriously. Mm-hmm. And speaking of that, I love how you're always kind of testing out new kind of content, new yeah. ways to do video. What's your approach to that? Like, do you give things a certain amount of time before you decide if it's going to be a regular thing? Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm always about testing. I'm, I feel like alignment. I, I say it a lot. I talk about it a lot. Um, there's going to be people that tell you, oh, you need to do this kind of content. Oh, you must you must hop on this trend of content. Um, so it took years of doing content. I've been putting content out online since t- uh, 2012 and a lot of content. So it took a doing a lot of content to find my sweet spot. And I realized my sweet spot was short and actionable content. Like I wanted to deliver content that you could watch and actually do something afterward instead of just hearing me ramble because I'm also a rambler. So I'm like, how can I overcome <laughs> um, my rambling situation and give like content that people can say, yeah, you know, and people who consume my content know I, I'm pretty straightforward. So I said, okay, I'm going to try to do videos in a minute, you know, and that's the thing. That was the thing with Instagram at the time too, when I made the decision to start doing minute videos. Um, so I just came up with the idea of making short, actionable content. Some of the videos are a little longer, sometimes three to five minutes. Um, but my goal is always to not make them too long and make them very actionable in that time. Got it. Now, what would you say has been your biggest mistake in this entire entrepreneurship journey? Oh, that's a great question. I think uh, my biggest mistake was trying to be someone I'm not. Um, Again, that comes back to alignment and honesty. So there's people that I love and I follow online. And there was a time I was trying to fit my business and my heart into whatever they were doing because it was working. And of course, it's great to look at role models and it's great to look at um, your, your coaches, your mentors, trainers, for examples, but to try to be them, you know, it's just not going to work. My business really took off when I became uh, myself, if that makes any sense online. So I was Catherine, always Catherine offline, but then online I was like trying to be Marie Forleo or Brendan Bouchard, um, trying to make my business a replica of it, trying to sound like them. And that wasn't working. When I just Sometimes I have clients who, not right now, but when I used to do like the one-on-one coaching, 
Uh, a lot of them were trying to talk like someone else. Like I would be talking to them. And then when we go over their copy or um, their lead magnet or their training, it sounds totally different. Like I can't feel them through their content. And if you look at your content and you realize that it doesn't sound like you, it doesn't look like you, um, it doesn't flow like you, then you're going to have a problem, you know, building your business to the level that you can. So I'm a big believer in authenticity and not, and I made a post about this recently, not fake authenticity. So sometimes people are like, oh, I'm being authentic, but they're trying to authentically be someone else. If that makes sense. So <laughs> yes. it's, it's, yeah. So really just be you don't overthink how you're going to deliver the content, just really reach more within. Sometimes people are looking for how to deliver their content by searching outwards. So when it's really about just digging inwards and bringing out more of that. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that. Yeah. The authentic word. It's so funny to me because sometimes I'm like, but you're, you're (laughs) crafting a story, like all your authentic, you know, behind the scenes are like, it's not that they're perfect, but Mm -hmm. I can tell you, you map this out. (laughs) You try You tried too hard. So Mm -hmm. anyway, now you talked about the the being too broke for too long. And, you know, these Mm -hmm. things are cyclical. They can be up and down. How are you ensuring now that your business is Mm -hmm. sustainable and your income is consistent? I think it's really important for everyone to hop on some sales funnels. I mean, yes, yes, yes. We just had an episode about that. But yes, do share. Um. So not just setting up a funnel for your business, but an automatic, that's another thing. Right now, there's a lot of brand coaches, quote unquote, um, you know, telling you about funnels and everything, but it's not just about having a funnel. It's also about, it's about having a passive funnel. And for me, that means you need passive traffic. So passive traffic, my favorite, of course, is ads. And to me, that's the most passive because you set it up and it's continuously, you know, gaining you the exposure you need, but also Building that home of content is also a way to get passive traffic in the long run. So let's say someone goes to your YouTube or your IG or your Facebook. If there's content there for them to consume and call to actions on there, that can help too. But at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in like really, really passive, which to me, running ads, having a funnel that converts for you, whether that's a webinar funnel or video series or email series, but something that can work for you because I feel like especially if you're, everyone's different. But for me, I'm a person that I'm always like learning something new about myself. And I'm always, you know, um, thinking about something new or working on this, working on that. And if I didn't have a sales funnel in place, there would be times where I would make no money because I'm trying to figure out, all right, what, what do I want to do with this offer? Or I change my mind and I might switch it up or something like that. And even if I wasn't doing that, I can't imagine, you know, always having to think about where's the next client coming from, when I'm going to do my next launch. Right. Um, so I think passive income is, is a great thing. You know, you can figure out what flows your boat, whether that's just building up, up your blog content. And as uh, the time goes, having the residual traffic go to that, or if it's building your social media page, it's because I get sales as well, passive sales from my Instagram page. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I ensure things because I am a person that I'm always like coming up with these crazy things and going this way and going mm-hmm. that way. And that's just keeping it hundred. So, so how do your funnels work? So are people, mm-hmm. if they click on an ad, are they going to a masterclass or are they going to, and if they're, are you showing up live or are they going to like an email series that eventually invites them to buy? A uh, master, well, webinar, yeah, masterclass, free masterclass webinar. Um, that's my favorite way because it's it's kind of also the fastest from what I've experienced. But yeah, people opt in and they have the option to watch a webinar um, either that day or up to the next day. And after they uh, watch the webinar, you know, they're given the option to purchase, you know, an offer. And then there's some follow up emails that, you know, um, kind of gives them more info, some more content over the course of like five days. And then, um, yeah, from there, if they don't buy, I mean, they're just general email list and that's it. And then there's people that buy. And so that kind of just creates like a consistency of income. Now, it's not, you know, everyone's cup of tea. Let's say if you're someone you you know that you launch like every three times a year and you know for sure like that is your baby and that's your thing, then that's absolutely cool too. But um, it's also great, you know, if you have different, if your person has different offers, um, definitely automating at least one of them, I think is a great, a great idea. Okay. Yeah. 
So now we're going to jump into the lightning round where you just answer the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Sure. All right. Number one, what is a resource that has helped you in your business that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? Fiverr.com. Absolutely. Fiverr.com. Um, so Fiverr is where you can find freelancers to do work for you. Some people are not uh, for it, but for me, who sometimes needs something a little more random than um, someone long term, it's definitely a great resource because I feel like you can find someone to do anything. And a lot of times just within a few hours. Um, and of course, you know, there's other the other freelance sites for longer term work, but definitely Fiverr um, for all types of things. And another uh, resource I would say is Google.com, honey. All right, yes. Because there are so many free resource. People say, oh, I don't know how to do this. How do you do that? I'm like, girl, just Google it. Like for real, for real, Google. There's everything. So, yes. Yeah. Number two, what's been the best business book or podcast episode that you've consumed this year? I would have to say the best book is Speed of Implementation. Um, yeah, I consumed it this year, last year, year before that, but it's always at the top of every book um, for me. And then podcasts, I listen, I, I kind of listen to a lot of random podcasts. I would say for me this year, what has been really helpful is Manifestation Babe and Brenda Bashar, The Charged Life. Um, those are, you know, great podcasts. Number three, who is a Black woman entrepreneur that you would want to trade places with for a day and why? Chanel Cooper Sykes, um, because if you haven't heard of her, you know, she's big on the personal development game as well. Inner work, a lot of inner work for women. And I just love how she has in-depth trainings for this personal development stuff. So she's someone that I, you know, I really look up to. I've been to her events. I've taken her classes, read her books, and I would love to trade places with her for a day just to see what that feels like, because that's where I'm aiming to go. All right. And speaking of habits, what is a personal habit that has helped you significantly in your business? Uh, definitely exercising every day now. And I can definitely feel just the difference when I start my day and I feel, you know, just more of this official, you know, I'm feeling myself after I work out. Another big thing is it sounds so small for some people. They've been doing it all their life. Not me is making my bed. So about a year and a half ago, I had finally started making my bed in the morning. <laughs> so it's such a tiny habit, but that little habit has led to all my other habits. That's why I always um, mention it because before my life used to be all over the place, I would just wake up and I'm just kind of my, wherever my head is at, that's kind of where I would just move and nothing would really get done. So I, when I started creating habits in my life, that was one of the first ones that I started with since growing up as a kid. I never really was you know, told to do that. It didn't really matter in my household. So just doing that, when I started doing it, I began to, it sounds a little, but, you know, believe in myself that I could do something consistently. I love that. Finally, number five, what is your parting advice for fellow women entrepreneurs who want to be their own boss, but are worried about losing a steady paycheck? I would say um, just start small. It doesn't mean that you have to quit. Uh, or or immediately, you know, get started, but really get started. Don't just start. Yes, yeah, they start small, but don't start half, you know, halfway. Like if you're going to start small, go all the way with that small um, and really do it consistently until until you, you know, see the consistency come. And my main thing is I feel like the fastest way to get to where you want to go is back to the honesty thing, because I feel like what has slowed down many of the people I speak to is not being honest with themselves about what they want to try out, what they want to speak about, who they want to target, what they really want to sell, what they really want to say. And so I think the fastest way for you to see results in your business is to be very honest with yourself and um, pursue what you feel pulled to. And of course, to do it like completely, like really, really do it all the way. Even if you're doing it small in the beginning, really give um, your 100% with whatever you say you're going to do. All right. So Catherine, where can people connect with you after this episode? I know everyone is going to be wanted to be a fiercer woman. So tell us <laughs> the details. <laughs> 
I definitely I spend the most time on Instagram, um, Fierce Catherine, um, Catherine with a C. So Fierce Catherine on Instagram, uh, fiercerwoman.com. You go to fiercerwoman.com, you could download my free guide, you know, on how to really become the woman that you want to be. Um, just the seven areas I feel are important. And also um, you can join my email list. You can find my Fierce Woman files on that site as well. So you can indulge in those. I'm also on Facebook. If you search Fierce Catherine, you'll find me on Facebook, but I'll be a hundred with you. I spend most of my time on Instagram or just with my Fierce Woman files, which you can find on Instagram. So, yeah. All right. And there you have it, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the side hustle pro Facebook community. Go to side hustle pro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Thank you.